this is the piece I'm working on. This is a custom order and we're going for kind of a um, worn aged wood look. So um, I'll show you some of the colors I'm going to be using, but I wanted to show you the first thing I did to prep this piece. This had it. This is the original finish on this inset panel here that you can see. It has an interesting finish on it. It's kind of a, um, a laminate over the wood. It's a solid wood piece, but it's got a, um, I don't know what you want to call it, but that, that laminate type finish over the wood. Um, and so it's really a slick finish, um, kind of glossy. So Dixie Bell has a brand new product, Slick Stick. And this is made for painting over slick surfaces like um, it's specifically this PVC glass formica. So this would be like if you want to paint your old formica countertops, you know, give them a faux granite look or marble look, um, <clears throat> metal, anything that's really slick. This gives the paint something to grip onto. So because I have this slick surface here, I first prepped this piece. I coated this, um, you know, sort of yellowy. Got a bunch of people saying hi. You've got Anissa saying hi. Hi, guys. Marianne. Thank you for finding me on my page today. Carrie from Kentucky. Hi, Carrie. Good morning, you guys. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. It's afternoon now. I'm a late riser. Just so everybody knows, I want to put that out there right now. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> Cheryl from Canada. Oh, hey, Cheryl. Thank you guys for finding me. I'm sorry for the confusion. <clears throat> so, um... I'm using Dixie Bell Slick Stick. This is a new product. It goes on just like a paint. It's very easy to apply. It doesn't have any odor or anything, so this is one that could be used indoors. Um, but it's so user friendly, and I just coated that slick surface that I had. So um, this is how I started off this piece. I started off with that kind of yellow glossy finish. That was my original finish. I coated my entire piece in Slick Stick. So I just wanted to show you that before we start on the paint, what I used to get this prepared for paint because it had that glossy finish on it. So just a quick question. Tanya wants to know if you reupholster chairs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do, and I have, it's a lot of work. It's a really lot of work. Um, I do all the time the chair cushions that you could just staple from underneath. Um, no problem doing those. But when you have to fully remove and use upholstery tacks and things like that, it's a whole nother level. I've done it, but it's a lot of work. Tess says hi. Hi. Oh, hey, Tess. So I'm going to move now to the front of my piece, and we're going to work our way across it. I'm going to show you this finish um, from start to finish. But our first step was with the slick stick. My husband's here helping me out today, guys. So if you guys have any questions, shoot them out, and he'll read, he'll read um, questions to me. Um, I brought a whole bunch of stuff out today because for the look that we're going to do, there's so many options. I'm just going to show you, you know, a couple choices, um, but there's really a lot of different ways that you could do this depending on the look that you want for your, um, for your piece. So I started out after I did this lipstick, I gave my whole body a clean coat of Dixie Belle Manatee Gray. So that's this that we're starting with here. We went from the slick stick, one coat of manatee gray, um, just kind of slapped on there to give it some, do you guys notice how chalk paint bonds better when you have a coat of paint on it already? So that's what I'm starting with. Then I'm gonna go back with, so for this look, I like to layer um, cool neutrals and warm neutrals. So I'm starting out with a layer of cool. I like to have contrast between my layers. So. My next layer is gonna be a warm neutral, which is a brown. So I'm gonna go in between grays and browns. Since I'm starting with a gray, my next one will be a brown. So Elaine wants to know if the, if the uh, slick stick has shellac in it. No, it doesn't. It's not, um, it's not gonna prevent bleed through. So for that, you would still need to use your Dixie Bell Boss. And then Kimberly wants to know if you always paint with the drawers and everything put together or when they're out. No, I don't. So for example, this solid one color finish, um, I took the drawers out for, but when I do blending and I'm going to be blending across the front of my piece, I keep my, I put my drawers back in because I want everything to be consistent from one side to another. I don't want to have a, you know, transition point where my drawers stopped and maybe I changed my stroke or something. So for blending, I always put my drawers back in and then I will come back and I will touch up around, I will take them back out and touch up around my drawer. So for today, what I'm doing, I'm going to have my drawers in my piece. Carrie so, says hi from Texas. Hey guys. 
So I'm going to spray my piece liberally. This is not just the lubrication that I normally do. This I want my piece to be nice and kind of wet. We're going to do a color wash with the with the, the green brown. says hi from Ireland. Ooh, Ireland. Oh my gosh, it's nighttime over there for you guys. Somebody had me look up what time it would be in France. It's nine o'clock in France right now, nine p.m. So I'm taking my chocolate. Um, and we're going to do a wash. Lisa a wants to know what's that rolling thing that you're on. She's been trying to find one. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, you guys, you guys know my stool is like a big joke, right? Um, so the stool I'm sitting on started out as one like this, which is a mechanic stool. And it broke. Like the seat full on detached from the post. So my husband took the post out. And it's I'm on just the seat on a base just like this. So... It is an improperly assembled mechanic stool, but I'm telling you, I use it all the time. It works great. I use this for working up high, and I sit on this for working down low. So it's a huge joke, you guys. People have caught me on it before, but it's literally a broken stool. I'm going to start marketing them, I think. There's big money in it, apparently. You guys can come out if you want. So I'm doing a color wash. I'm really going to wash the front of this piece in this chocolate. I'm going to paint it on a really wet, drippy coat. I'm going to get it all, all into all these details here. Super messy, doesn't really matter. Okay, once I've got a little bit of it everywhere, making sure I get into all my crevices, because that's where I want it to sit. This is almost like using a glaze, a paint wash, almost like using a glaze. It's gonna leave a thin layer of the paint over the top of my base coat. So Wendy, just real quick, wants to know what color this is. She just tuned in. Um, this is a base of Dixie Belle Manatee Gray, and then I'm using Dixie Belle Chocolate over it. So those are the two colors we're using right now. I'm gonna go through a bunch of colors today. This is a more complicated finish. So this is a paint wash. I, I'm washing this gray in a coat of the brown. I'm wiping it all off, but it's gonna stay in my low points and it's gonna leave a haze over the gray base. Cause I want a kind of streaky look on this. So when I wipe this back, there's different techniques you can do with a paint wash. If you take your rag and want it more streaky, you can use a lighter and you can layer colors that way. Get a streaky look with a paint wash by just how you wipe back. So you get a nice strie effect. I've done this with a base of gray with a darker gray over the top and you leave that streakiness. It's really pretty. But um, for this, I want it wiped back a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna take that brown back. I really just want a thin haze over. I don't want it to um, overwhelm my piece. This particular customer, um, who I love by the way, you guys, this has been one of my most fun orders. They're building a house right now. So this is going to go in a brand new house and we've done, this will be our fifth piece together for this new house. And, um, this room, she sent me some inspiration photos, kind of has a beachy look. Um, so I know they want to lean more towards the grays than the browns. If you wanted more towards browns, you could leave more of this on when you wipe it off. But see how I left it as a nice, thin, thin layer there? But it's really in all my moldings really nicely. So from there, that was a paint wash. We're going to do some dry brushing. Um, for this look, I brought out a whole bunch of colors that you could choose to do dry brushing that would all be friendly. If you think of what colors are in, like an aged wood, um, it would be your browns, your grays, black, white, you know, kind of maybe it has a, an old paint finish on it that has chipped away over time. So I have Dixie Belle cotton, um, Dixie Belle drop cloth. We use the chocolate, of course. Um, gravel road is a great choice because this is kind of a warm gray. It's got the um, brown undertones. Um, some of their blacks like Midnight Sky and Caviar would be beautiful. I'm not going to use those here. I even would like Vintage Duck Egg kind of layered in here. Um, so these are just some options. 
For my look today, my next color I'm going to use, and I'm going to dry brush this on, is Dixie Belle Drop Cloth. Just really quick, Janice says hi. Ashley says I love your tutorials. Hi, thanks guys for watching. And Sandy's watching. Yeah, I mean, I'm live on my own page. I was supposed to be on the Dixie Belle page today. I ended up not getting access as an admin this morning. So I'm making the most of it. We're going live on my own page this morning. It's actually less stressful, you guys. The Dixie Belle audience is a larger audience. It makes me really nervous. I'm way more comfortable on my own page. So you have um, questions in reference to, uh, did you spray water over? Did you, uh, let's see, did you, what are the bays you just used? Did you put any kind of top coat before you use the chocolate? No, I'm, us it's, I'm using this all on dry paint. So there's no top coat involved. I want it to stick a little bit. So this is a base of Dixie Belle Manatee Gray. And then we did a wash of chocolate over the top of it. So see how it warmed up my gray now? Um, now I'm going to take... Um, so I have this brush. I don't know where it came from. Um, but I love it for dry brushing. It's fat. It's thick. It's coarse. It's got natural bristles on it. Um, I believe it's a wallpaper brush. It actually came from my mother-in-law's house when we cleared it out. Um, but it's become one of my favorite tools. So I use it a lot for dry brushing. So for dry brushing, literally you want your brush dry. Almost has no paint on it. So when I dipped it in here, you know, you get a little bit of paint on your brush. I'm going to take as much of that off as I can. See my garage floor looks like this? Because I do this all the time. That's why I dab it off. But you could use a paper plate, you know, if you really care about your house. <laughs> um, and then I'm going to br dry brush this on. So dry brushing is barely any paint on your brush. And I'm going to skim the top of this. A really light hand. I may need to come in for this because it's going to... Um, and you'll see how it's going to catch... See how it hit the top of that medallion? Um, I'm going to streak some of it into my paint finish. Oh, that was way too heavy, guys. But it's paint. So I, I want a smoother streaky effect, so that's okay that I just wipe that there. This is a layering. So every place that I make a mistake, I know that I can layer over it. See how light I'm just hitting this with a little bit of the white. It finds all the high spots. Jamie says, thanks for doing these videos. They've been very helpful to me. Thank you, guys. I'm You've so made me become a huge watch. Dixie Ball fan. She just bought her eighth paint color. Ooh, what color did you get? I love their color line, you guys. Um, they really, it really has everything in it that I've needed. Um, so, you guys can see I'm just streaking this white in. Um, I want to go a little bit lighter on this finish, so I'm going to keep it kind of consistent. I even like, so I was just going horizontally with my brush strokes to take it and go now vertically. Kind of gives you a little bit of a crotch, cross hatching. Um, Jamie oh. said her eighth color was drop cloth. Oh, perfect. That's what I'm using right now. <laughs> um, drop cloth's probably my favorite white. I use it the most of the Dixie Belle whites, I think. I'm going to use cotton, the pure white, later. But this is drop cloth right now. So I'm pretty consistent. Um, got a little bit all over. It's super faint, but it added that extra layer. And that's what we're doing. We're layering these paint colors. Can you go back through the colors just so everybody is aware? So, so far we've used Manatee Gray is my base. Chocolate was my first. Okay, here's the best tip. This is all you need to know to paint. My paint lid is stuck on this container because I used it the other day. See that? And it opens now. Happens all the time, but all you do is give it a good hit on the ground. One good hit, make sure your lid is attached, otherwise your paint will come flying out. Um, and I just opened it. So now I'm coming back with Gravel Road, which is a really dark gray. I'm going to use my same brush that has the white on it, and now I'm going to dry brush in some of the Gravel Road. This one here, I'll move forward to this one. This one I did, I stopped at the white. So these two in theory should kind of match, but I'm going to carry my gravel road over here too. So you'll see me start working every panel. I kind of stopped and, um, just a timeline, did the next step on it. So some are a little bit further ahead. Okay. On the gravel road for dry brushing this, let me show you. I don't want this. See that look right there. 
I don't want that. I want it to be a little bit softer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of water because I want this one to be, see how it kind of blurred the streaks? That's the look that I want. You could leave it like that if you want them to be a more apparent, but I want this color to be softer. This is a kind of a soft look that I'm going for. It's kind of hard because I'm not over on that side. Normally I'd be sitting directly in front of my piece and looking at you know all sides of it. So um, I may have to come back and just make sure that I'm consistent on that side too. I don't want to block the camera though. So I'm using water to really blur the streaks on this color. You can still see them. It's still layering it. Yeah, I can tell that I don't have any over here. So I'm going to come in and give this side some color too. It's really this kind of back and forth. So now if I saw this and I wanted more white, I'd use the same brush and come back with the drop cloth and come back and throw some white in there. You could throw some more brown in here if you want to lean towards the brown, but I want these colors layered. And that really means this back and forth process. I'm liking this, like this spot right here is nice and soft. I can see all the colors I've used so far. Yeah, this is pretty too. Carrie's asking, is Gravel Road a gray green? Gravel. She said it's hard to tell. Gravel Road's a gray. Let's see. Let's see if this helps. It's a gray, but it's a warm gray. It has like a brown undertone to it. I really like this color. If you water it down, it actually turns into kind of a brown color. <laughs> Carla wants to know if you're ambidextrous. <laughs> sure you're painting with the left hand on the blending video I watched. <laughs> no, you know what happens? If I put my phone on selfie mode, it reverses everything. So, um, I don't know. Am I, do I look like a righty or a lefty today? Anyway, that's what makes the difference. I'm right-handed. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I've been asked that before, but it flips everything around when I put it on selfie mode. So usually if I'm filming myself, um, I, I look, guess if you're right-handed, like that's when you know you have someone else here to help. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how you tell. If my husband's home that day. <laughs> so I'm going back and forth with the gray and the white. I could even come back with my chocolate. If I wanted to warm this up a bit, throw some chocolate in there. Just dabbed it off on my floor. Yeah, I really like that. It's a little bit warmer. I mean, so, so slight, you guys. I'm using a really light hand as I go back and forth. Um, I really want these lines to be kind of blurred. See, that's kind of apparent up here. I'm going to blur that out a little bit. I feel like it needs more white on this side. Again, I can't see that side very well, so. Sally says it looks great. Thanks, Brenda says Sally. she loves the piece. Oh, isn't this piece gorgeous? Yes, I can, so I'll zoom in. It has, um, it has hardware that's like a, a swag. It's really pretty hardware. But see how my brown got into the crevices here? But I've got the dark gray streaked in. There I just streaked in some more of the brown, some more of the white. This is all just dry brushing layering. Um, if I want a more streaky look, I put my paint in and I would leave that. But this one I want to soften them, so I'm over brushing it a little bit. Just brush them out. If I want it softer, I would add water to it. But I really like that look there. So I'm going to come over here and I'll do a little bit more of the dry brushing. This has the um, gray base, has the chocolate over it. And then I started with some white. So now I'm going to come back. My next color was the, um, the gravel road, the dark gray. See, that's a little strong. I'm going to come back and blur that out a little bit. It happens like all the time, guys. Um, it's just this layering. You'll figure out, you know, what does it need next? And come back and add some more of one color, cover up another. So I want these to soften a bit. I added some water. I'm hitting these kind of hard because I want to blur them out. I'm going to spray my brush a little bit. See how it blurred that streak out really nicely? And I like it. 
I want variation across my piece. I'm not trying to make it all match. So that's some nice grays in there. It's a little dark now, so I'm going to go back with my white. Same brush. Adding a little bit of white in there. Have to admit, guys, I honestly feel more relaxed going live on my own page. I don't, I know that doesn't probably make any sense, but. Now, whether it was a typo or not, Amy's saying, hi, Mr. Brandy. Oh. <laughs> I just want to point that out. Yeah, that must be a typo because nobody would call you Mr. Brandy. <laughs> Usually they call him Mr. Brush by Brandy. <laughs> I prefer the shorter version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So now I'm going back with some of the brown. I'm going to warm this up a little bit. This is my brown. Sonia wants to know if it's the same brush you're using to dip into each container. Same brush. Same brush. Um, you know, if it started getting a little muddy and, and it wasn't working for me, but so far, like, I want these colors to blend together. So I'm using the same brush for everything. Kimberly time. wants to know. Sorry, kind of made me laugh. If you can't get the brush from your mother-in-law's old house, any suggestions? <laughs> nope, sorry. No! Sorry, you're out of luck. <laughs> this is a one-of-a-kind brush right here. I'm pretty sure this is a wallpaper brush. She used to do wallpapering. Um, I will find one on Amazon and I'll link it on here. Because honestly, I would say this has probably become one of my new favorite tools. It is perfect for dry brushing. If you don't have one of these, I also brought this out. This is just a chip brush. But chip brushes have that nice coarse texture, really uneven natural bristles. That's really what you want. So I'm going to show you with a chip brush too. But I don't like it as much. I'm going to tell you that right now. You need a lighter hand. I feel like it's less, um, you have to be more careful with the chip brush. I feel like with that big fat brush, I, it's so easy. So this may, is making me nervous right now with the chip brush. It works. It's just easier, I think, to go too heavy, too light, whatever. I feel like I have less control over it. But that worked too. But I'm going to come back now with my favorite brush and clean it out. Not gonna lie. It's a one of a kind. Yeah. No, I will find one on Amazon and I will link it for you guys because it um it really I like it for dry brushing. I used it on my wallpaper video when I put the um textured wallpaper on the front of my piece. I use this to smooth my wallpaper out. I'm using it all the time I'm finding, so can you go over the colors you've used once again? Okay, so far I had a base of um manatee gray. I did a wash of Dixie Bell chocolate. You guys, I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at the one next to it, and I'm going to put some more white on it, onto this. It's starting to dry, and I just feel like it needs that little bit of... Um, so, Manatee Gray was my base. Um, a wash of chocolate over that. I'm dry brushing in Gravel Road and Draw Cloth. Okay, so over here... I did my dry brushing. This one has a clear coat on it. So my next layer is gonna be with glazes. So for this one, I chose Dixie Belle Grunge Glaze. Um, it, this look also looks really pretty with, a, with their Van Dyke Brown Glaze, but I know this customer wants to lean more towards the grays. So I'm gonna do my glaze in a gray. Colleen so I, said that it's nice to know that Brandy gets nervous too from time I to time. Do. You guys, I don't think you ever get used to painting on camera, but it's really nerve wracking when people are watching you. I have to think about what I'm doing and try to explain it. Usually my mind is like off in left field somewhere. I'm thinking about, you know, the kids or whatever, but this makes me have to think about what I'm doing. This is my free therapy. Okay. So over here where I've got my clear coat on already, I did these steps clear coated it now i'm going to put some glaze on here so i'm just okay. so cindy says that you're like the joanna Gaines of painting oh i wish however if that's you that would make my husband the chip -tree. there we go there <laughs> we go that's a compliment i think i love chip games um so i'm gonna spray this with a little bit of water 
This is my paintbrush has a little bit of the brown on it and that's okay. Because it actually warms up my glaze and I like that. So I'm going to go over all of this. So I'm layering paint, glaze, everything in it to get these colors mixed in. Um, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to restreak this over the top. So Kelly wants to know if you leave the drawers in only when you're doing the wash and do you leave them in when you do the wax also? Um, no, for this one they're only in because I'm blending colors over the top. So no, normally I paint with my drawers out. I only do this because let's say I'm blending colors over the front. I don't want it to stop in one section and start in another. I want to make sure they look the same. So um, for this, yes, I do leave my drawers in. Normally if I'm doing just a solid coat of paint, I will take my drawers out. So after this, I'm going to need to come back and touch up my drawer edges. So this is grunge gray glaze. I mean, you can see how it's grunging up my molding here. So that's just another layer. This is that, this is that layering of paint. Um, and again, this is after my dry brushing has all dried. I put a clear coat over the top and now I'm adding in the glaze. I like glaze on this piece because glaze is nice and thin. It's going to find my low points. Um, and this has great moldings on it, and I really want to accentuate those. I'm going to go back and show you another way to accentuate them, too. So this has gray glaze over the top. Can you see how it just deepened the color? Does that show on camera? Yeah, I backed up to give it a contrast so you can see the... Okay, so you can see kind of the difference that the, the glaze added. It just really deepened the color. I'm going to wipe it back a little bit. Wendy wants to know if you use tape on the drawers. Um, tape. Tape. Maybe it'll block anything off or... No, I don't. So I'm getting, I can see here, let's see if I can open this drawer. Um, I'm getting paint along the edges. I will come back after I'm done with this and I would clean up all my drawer edges too. I wouldn't leave it like that. So I wiped back my glaze a little bit. I'm going to wipe, wipe it back from the top of my moldings. I really just want it to sit in those low spots but it still has a deeper color than that spot that doesn't have the top coat and the glaze over it and I really like the colors that are going on in here so I will come back and clear coat these and put that same glaze over the top I'll add some waxes on here and that'll be kind of my final look um let's see what was I just gonna say I lost my thought guys um RC in. wants to know if you lightly buff or sand between layers of paint. Yeah, I always do. I always do. I would, I would literally, not, I'm not sanding like with a sander. I would take a sanding sponge. Let's see if it's dry enough that I can work. Yeah. Okay, so this is fairly dry right now. So I would just take it and literally go like this. I'm not trying to sand it. I'm just trying to knock down the high points and really um, smooth out that coat of paint. So if my... You know, this, this I layered while the paint was still wet, but if I let it dry in between, I would sand and then wipe it back. And it's so, I mean, you can feel it's so much smoother. It really just takes down like little particles of dust. Sonia wants to know how you have clean paint pants. Oh, I don't. These are my good pants because I was going live today. So no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I have like three pairs of pants that I wear for painting. Old yoga pants. And they're all stained and painted like the butt is covered in white paint everything they're disgusting but i thought oh i better dress nice because i'm going on camera today so i don't in fact i'm scared i will get paint on these cover it with my apron so anyway guys i mean that was kind of it we did a color wash we did a lot of dry brushing layering these colors in like i'm loving this section right here this is exactly can you zoom in this is exactly the look I'm going for. See how I can see the browns in there, the grays, there's a little bit of white streaked in on you know, my moldings and stuff. I love this section right here. And then over here, how it just deepened the colors with that glaze. It's, you know, I think this is gonna be a pretty look. So anyway, I'll post my affiliate link on my own page. You guys see it all the time in case you guys wanna order some paint. The colors we used again, uh, manatee gray, chocolate, drop cloth, and gravel road is what I've got on here so far. 
and then grunge glaze. And then I also said I would link my um, this brush that I love for dry brushing too. I'll find you guys one. I'm just going to see if it has any. It's probably what? What are the four brush? inch? Four inch, you think? Four inch, three quarters thick. It's a straight cut bristle, so it's not like a 45 or anything like that. And it's just frayed out a little over time. Can you guys tell my husband has a contractor background? He has an office job now. He works actually for a bank, but um, <laughs> he used to uh, he used to be in contracting. So anyway, that's kind of it. We'll let you guys go. Um, I'm going to go out to my home build today, and I will give you guys an update on that. Supposedly, we have walls. So really quick, what do you coat this with in the end? I'm going to use wax on this. I like wax because it gives that nice, soft look. So I'm going to come back and give this a coat of wax, and I'll um, accent, you know, how I do my, um, you know, maybe I'll do that. You guys want to see a little bit of a detail waxing? Let me get my brushes because I wasn't planning on waxing. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, guys. I feel like I need to juggle on camera or something. I've shown you guys these brushes before. This is the section that has that clear coat on it. My glaze is still a little bit wet, but I'm just gonna, I'll just do like a corner so you can see how I'm gonna do the wax. Do you seal anything before you put the wax on? No, the wax is my sealant. So I would put a clear coat of wax on, on it, but I already put the, a clear coat on this. Oh my God, my clear wax, where's my black? Well, anyway, I'll show you with gray. I'm, I'm gonna do this with black, but I'm just gonna show it with the gray. So this is Dixie Bell's new, um, gray wax which actually is great for this piece because I want it to lean towards the grays. <laughs> I was just referred to as Chip. <laughs> Thank you Cindy. <laughs> yeah. Is that better than Mr. Brush by Brandy? Um, so I would feather in, see how light my hand is and I'm just going down the side of this piece. Um, I'm not going to do a lot because it's, I can tell it's, uh, my glaze isn't dry yet. But see how I'm, this is just to show you this brush stroke, how I would feather in wax on the edge. So up close, you might not be able to tell because it's so faint. But if you back away, you can tell it just gave that a really faint little shadowing detail. That's just, this is their grunge gray glaze, or I'm sorry, wax. This is their uh, new brown or new gray wax. And I just use a really soft brush stroke and feather that into the edges. See how it just emphasized my edge ever so slightly. That gray wax is perfect for this look. So And your brush? Um, so these brushes here, this one's from Art Minds, but Waverly makes these and they're available at Walmart. Um, I'll post that link too. But these are my absolute favorite for detail waxing for that little soft. This doesn't have a top coat on it. Um, but look how pretty that is. A great size they've got a nice coarse brish, bristle on it so I can just feather that wax in so that's how I get people love like these shaded edges and that's how I get them I'm just using wax look at this what this is doing for this top panel here it's very time consuming but I actually really like doing it so see what that did for that top panel if I come down here and do this one too just emphasizes those edges a little bit. I'm getting barely any wax on my brush. Michelle's saying hi from Scotland. Hi, Michelle. Now, what do you use to wash out that brush? Um, I will use Dawn dish soap and, and water. Murphy's oil soap works okay too, um, but I just use, I just go to my sink and use Dawn dish soap and warm water. Um, I actually don't wash my wax brushes out every time I use them. I'll store them in a Ziploc baggie like this. And I'll use this. This will keep it soft. This is a wax brush I've used before, and you can see it's not hardened. That'll keep it soft through a few use uses until it gets to where I need to wash it out. So if you back up a little bit, can, or I don't know if you can see all three of these drawers. Yeah. Okay. So you can see where I've given that little detail of wax around the edges. Um, this is not top coated yet. I would not normally do that, but I'm showing this on camera. 
So um, you can see where I added this detail of wax around the edges versus this one that I didn't. The difference that that makes. So I'm going to deepen the colors with the glazes and then I'm going to add that wax detailing in. So the wax that you have, where did you purchase it? This is Dixie Belle Wax. This is their new gray wax. How cool is that? This would be gray over, so I mentioned if you did the gray base with a wash of a darker gray, with that streaky effect with a gray wax, oh, so pretty. Or even a silver wax would be really pretty. Um, I'll post my affiliate link if you guys want to order this new gray wax, but it's it's great like to have it in your stockpile. So that's kind of it. You guys saw some glazing, some washing, some dry brushing some what else is there that's all that's everything i know how to do sorry guys so anyway if you like this video share it i'll post my affiliate link order some paint um we use some really great neutral colors to get this look today i'm going to post this finished piece when i'm done um so you guys can see what these techniques come together as but it's really just a back and forth a layering process until you like the look so anyway have a good saturday mr brush by brandy says goodbye